What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the second beta of macOS Tahoe 26.2 to developers, and this video will be showing you what is new inside the software. We got something interesting to talk about and a couple of other additional changes. Let's get started. Alright, for me, on my M4 Mac Mini, it came at 3.33 gigabytes. Alright, so the first thing is that if you were to use an app that uses the camera, let's use Photo Booth, for example, you're going to see, not by default, if you were to go to your camera settings and go to Edge Light right here, you'll see that this is a brand new option. It adds a little ring light around your green. And as you can see, when you move your cursor, you can see directly under it, and it just fades, which is a pretty cool feature, to be honest. And you can turn it off, or you can turn it on, you can even customize it a bit, you can make it dimmer, or you can make it brighter, more thicker, you can make it more warm, you can make it more cool. I believe this is what it was by default, but you could just customize it to your heart's content. This is especially useful for darker settings, especially the one I'm in, where I made it dark on purpose for this example. But luckily, you'll be able to have a new ring light if you really wanted a ring light inside of macOS. Alright, the next thing has to do with the games app. If you were to open up the games app right here, you're going to see what's new in Apple games. We've got a new splash screen here, first of all. we got filter your library, at controller navigation support, and track challenge scores. And when you press continue, you're going to see everything looks about the same. But if you were to go to your library right here, you're going to notice that there's a brand new sort button. And clicking on the sort button, you can see you could filter based on what's on your Mac right now. And you can even sort by name and add a lot of other sorting options, which is pretty convenient to see. Now, inside of iOS, we did get a little size option, but for some reason on macOS, we don't have that quite yet. Now, I'm pretty sure it's because that the API is a little bit different on macOS than iOS. So Apple will probably add that in the next beta, to be honest. But if it's not in the next beta, then it probably won't come for a while, at least, if at all. Alright, the next thing is that we got a brand new splash screen inside the Reminders app. So it does mention Add Alarm, but picture this, because Alarm Kit is not available on macOS, it says Mark Reminder as urgent and get alarm when it's due on your iPhone or iPad. So this will only set an alarm on your iPhone or iPad, and it mentions Snooze. Snooze your alarm if you can't get to it right away. And then if you were to press Continue, this is a nice little new splash screen style, by the way. And if you were to just go to Reminders right here, you're going to see Urgent Reminders are nowhere to be found. You actually have to set it on your iPhone iPhone or iPad because macOS does not have alarm kit, which is what the Reminders app is using. Now we do have a clock app on macOS, but that does not necessarily mean that alarm kit is on macOS. It's just that they basically reprogrammed it and did not bring over alarm kit to the Mac as of right now. However, we do have a little change inside the Reminders app and is that if you have reminders just jumbled up in here for basically groceries, for example, we have a little redesign. It now just says reminders list suggestion and when you click on it, it just suggests to create that reminders list for example just a little minor change inside the reminders app now the next thing is that with the automatically generated chapters inside the podcast app you're going to see that we have a little change right here and it is that if you were to open up the menu you now have little sparkles right here so before it would just say automatically created now it actually says us uh, that's automatically generated by AI, for example, since Sparkles is the glyph icon for AI at this point. So just a little indication that it is created by AI. We also got a brand new splash screen if you were to go inside the Freeform app. So it says introducing tables in Freeform, and it says basically what it is. And once again, we have that new style of splash screens right here, where it's where instead of saying what's new in Freeform, it now says introducing X in Freeform. I think that's a lot better, to be honest. That's probably what I'll be doing with my apps for the, in the near future, because just describing it like this is just a lot better. Now, the next change inside of macOS is that liquid glass seems to be a lot more liquidy, and I mean a lot more. If you were to go inside of the context menu here, for example, and scroll down a bit, you're going to see that it's more transparent. You can actually kind of see what's in the background. Meanwhile, before, it was more of a blur effect. That is just something I've noticed pretty much right away, is that the background here is more visible. You can also see it here inside of my app here as well. You can see the background here is a little bit more transparent compared to the previous beta if you were to have the previous beta up. And the buttons seem bigger as well. I don't know if that's just placebo or that I'm using a different screen right now, but the buttons just seem a lot bigger for some reason. All right, we got ourselves our Geekbench score here. We got a 3919 on the single core and a 15445 on the multi core inside of beta one. And then if we were to compare it, we got a 3811 on the single core and a 15295 on the multi core. 
Now those are both lower, but not too significantly much lower. Probably just margin of error to be honest. But that's our Geekbench score inside of the latest beta of macOS. All right, now what is next for Apple? So we got ourselves a calendar widget right here, and I was not expecting the second beta to come out here at all, especially on a Wednesday. I thought we were just past the point of a second beta coming out. But now we got something a little bit interesting. When can we expect the next beta of macOS? I'm going to say probably here on the 17th or the 18th. The reason why I say that is because that is when Apple will typically usually release betas either on a Monday or a Tuesday. And the reason that we got it on a Thursday was so weird. I We don't know why we got it on a Thursday that Apple just probably decided they had to like wait a bit before releasing the second beta. But that's how it is now. So we either get it on a Monday or a Tuesday and then move on to back to Monday most likely. And then we'll get the final beta probably early to mid-December. All right, what are some things that we can expect or not expect inside of the next beta? Well, the Apps app still has not changed right here. We can still see that the Apps app is still basically how it is inside of 26.1. And we're probably not going to get Launchpad anytime soon. Now, the next time I would expect a Launchpad to be announced or maybe be implemented again is inside of Mac OS 27. So this is a complete a third-party app called LaunchOS. I think it is the best replica version of Launchpad. It has folders and everything. In fact, I think folders are a lot easier to create here in Launchpad pad and it's a lot more customizable for example for the longest time inside of launch pad i've just always wanted a full screen mode where it just hides the dock but that is here now something you could expect is still potentially the ringtones now if it is not out in the next beta i probably would probably say 26.3 or tw more likely 26.4 to be honest but if it doesn't come inside 26.4 it probably isn't coming out inside of tahoe to be honest anyways that is mac os tahoe right here a pretty solid update now thanks for watching come on subscribe down my apps in the description down below and i'll see you in my next video bye